Tell me, son, were you unable to find a Christian maiden worthy of your love? Perhaps it's because of the many victories the Muslims have wrought that you have become one. First, I must admit that there have been Christian maidens whose beauty and grace have dazzled my eyes. But it was only Rahele who captured my heart. Secondly, I'm not after a marriage of convenience. Neither am I an opportunist. My love for Rahele has conquered me. <laughs> Able to find an Arab worthy of your daughter's hand? Oh, tribesmen, do not reproach me. I'm grateful that the Lord has blessed me with three sons. And now God has granted me a fourth. Do not try to deceive me, for everyone knows that this man was a Christian. He has turned his back on his own faith to win over Rahile. Who knows whether or not his convictions are for real? You speak the truth. Certainly, we do not know. Not long ago, we ourselves were idol worshippers. But when we converted to Islam, no one accused us the way you, a Muslim, are doing so. <laughs> the live fatherless Christian ever be worthy of your love? Am I not a man of wealth? My only position is a mill which I've made with my own hands, and there I labor day after day to earn a living. Rahele, you never felt lost in the midst of wilderness. It's more terrible to know you're refusing me than being lost on the sands of the blazing desert. I give my consent to your meeting my father, if you wish, Abdullah. But know this, I too have often found myself lost among the shifting sands of the blazing desert. Bring thou hither a camel laden with flowers, soon as they're pronounced man and wife. Who knows what bread shall come of it, O Muslima.
All portents are favorable for this wedding. Each time we refer to the holy book, the signs shone like the sun in its strength. The heavens themselves smile upon this match. <laughs> All bodes well for this holy marriage. Two feasts on a single day. The Christian Abdullah takes Rahila's hands in marriage and, at the same time, steps from darkness into light. Has he made his vows yet? Hmm. Thrice. Each time in a different form. The first time as though whispering to his lord. The second as though telling it to his kinsmen. And the third in a loud voice so that all could hear. Hussein ibn Ali, though no one has heard anything about him lately, he comes from Kufa and has caused vast distances to arrive here. It is rumored that Muslim ibn Aqil has been beheaded by Kufis, still worse, his head's been mounted on a pike. And all this in the month of Muharram? Come, Abdullah. They are expecting us. Was Muslim an idolater, a Gentile, or a disbeliever? Aye, he was a true believer, the paragon of a believer, to whom Husayn Ali's message had been committed. Such man was slain? Yes. To what purpose they slew him? I know not. The Kufis begged Husayn Ali to head for Kufa and return it to the way of the Prophet. Muslim was both his cousin and his messenger. What do you know about Husayn ibn Ali? He is a Rahilez Imam. This is how I first heard of him. I saw him once. He was walking among Christian slaves, reminding them of the kindness of Jesus, pleading with them to be patient. He removed their shackles. I listened while he said, I have come to bring liberty to the captives. My mission is not to enslave. A Persian conqueror mounted on a camel began to laugh. Hussein ibn Ali rebuked him in a loud voice. We have come to fight tyranny. We ourselves will not be tyrants. Many talk of his greatness, but none bear any resemblance to him. soaked banner. I hope this is not a portent of evil.
Where's my sword? My sword. Where did I put it? Where's my sword? You would gird a Christian with a sword? You object to the son? We have three generations of Islam behind us, while he has none. His Islam shines with freshness, while yours is tarnished with pride. For 60 years we've been Muslims. How you boast of your Islam. Your beliefs have been handed down to you by your fathers, while he has worked to gain his. Well done. Never did he deny Christ. Why should he? Those who denied him were after his blood. Christ was chosen by God, and now his follower can hear the divine words from Hussein's mouth. Father, they're here. Let the Arab gentry reprove me. Should a motherless child celebrate her marriage in grief? The guests have arrived. Let us bid them welcome, everybody. I give this sword as a gift to my son-in-law, Abdullah. And for my part, I give this to my esteemed father-in-law, Zaid. And you, Abdullah, accept this horse from your bride. It is valued at 10 gold coins. I've brought her a gift, a pair of earrings. Whoever gives them to her shall receive my thanks till the end of my days. Accept our father's love and the love of your brethren. Accept me as your brother. Thirty-seven times did he petition me for my daughter's hand. Each and every time my answer was none but no. But the last time, I wanted him to leave, but he could not leave. In the corner of the room, 
My daughter's eyes were bright with tears. I said to myself, there's nothing I can do. The die is cast. I said to myself, God's will be done. Who am I to stand in God's way? Abdullah, the son of Job, sends you this pair of earrings as a token of his love for you. A blessing on his head. Rahele accepts his gift. Falsehood may misfortune overtake. Hmm. Perhaps Muslim Mayor Real died a natural death. Hey, he's been asleep. Drink a sherbet, refresh yourselves, have some olives and figs. 
They're both holy fruits blessed by the Lord. When did the killing come to pass? There are still lingering doubts as to whether any killing has occurred. The messenger may have lied. Many people tend to exaggerate and spin yarns these days, you know? Verily, a false story. How could it be possible those who once stood in prayer behind him would now display his head on a pike? I bear witness that they have sent him messenger after messenger, begging him to rescue them and break the chains of slavery. They have also sent any number of letters to Hossein ibn Ali that Kufa was suffering under oppression. So they entreated Hossein to come and reinstate the law of the Prophet. Then why did Muslim ibn Aqil's host give him over to his enemies? There is no truth to such rumors. Is there anyone who can help me? Was it necessary for the writer of Zuljanah to make this journey? Jesus will be crucified in Nineveh tomorrow. What? The Kufis might kill Hussein ibn Ali, just as they killed his cousin. Yes. Hussein and his kinsmen headed for Kufa a long time ago. Which way have they gone? In which village have they stopped? On tomorrow, Jesus will be crucified in the valley of the shadow of death. Are you mocking me? No one has derided you, young man. None of you spoke of crucifixion? In Kufa, death is cheap. Yes, in Kufa, death is sold at a bargain price. How should we break the news? As soon as Hussein ibn Ali arrives in Kufa, he will hear about it. May God speed his return. His disciples are but a handful. How will he avenge Muslims' blood? No, no, he should never have gone. Kufa needed a commander. Is he not qualified for the job? Who better than him, I mean? Such an irony I've seen. <laughs> May God forgive the rebellious. What irony do you mean? Among the heathen world has spread, the Hussein embarked on that journey just for power. A plague on those who speak such idle words. Hussein has already been granted the Divine Commission. Is there anyone who can help me? Just repeat what we have heard. I say that Sidn ibn Adi deserves to take charge more than anyone. Why should he not go and regain his lost right? It's better for the ignorant to hold their tongues. And you, Marhab, from the Bani Taib tribe, why do you pretend to know things when you don't? If Hussein has gone to Kufa, he's gone on an important mission. Is taking charge of Kufa itself not a great mission? Greater than that is justice. Forbidding the Omeyyads from doing evil. Hmm. In truth, much has been spoken concerning Hussein ibn Ali's mission, but only the Almighty God knows the whole story. We'll never know the real reason behind it. They have slain his messenger. He might also receive likewise. Likewise. The journey to Kufa takes three days provided they have adequate provisions for a non-stop journey. Hussein ibn Ali could not have been murdered. What Muslim would commit a crime so shameful? Is there anyone who can help me? Who was it? Repeat what you have said. Did anyone call for help? I heard someone asking for help. Was it one of you? You know that it was none of us. 
It might have been someone from outside. Must have been someone in the crowd. that we can't hear. He has not given his allegiance. Therefore, he himself is a contender. I swear by the Lord, I heard a cry for help. We never know why. He is the only one who knows why. We might never understand and never know. The clergyman has arrived. We are Abdullah. Never have I seen such a rush. is the Christian you've chosen. He will not remain alive. He will pay for this insult with his blood.
which direction is Kufa? Reveal yourself to me, oh my guiding stars. Show me the way. Show me the way. All right, my good horse. There's water somewhere. Stay where you are. Grab his sword. <laughs> Can't you heathen tell between night and day? Behold the camel thief who calls me heathen. Behold the Pharisee who calls me a stealer of camels. Aren't you one of them? I'm on my way to Kufa, and I'm looking for water. If you're telling the truth, I told the truth. Give me a reason why you called me a camel thief. Is it not the month of Muharram during which fighting has been forbidden? For the sons of the desert, all days and nights are the same. What day is today? The day just passed was the ninth, and as soon as the sun reddens on the horizon, it will be the tenth. This night past was my wedding night. A time when no blood should have been shed. Come sit down. The poor animal is thirsty. Dry him. Camel's milk is all we have to offer. It is what we drink. Tell me, why have you left your bride? My departure was not of my choosing. Rahel's fragrance perfumes the air. The air of all deserts. She smells of the flowers of Persia. I think you've been struck with madness. I 
I need the answer to one question. There is something I have to know. The question must be of grave importance to cause you to rush through the night as if a djinn were pursuing you. The one whom I seek is Hussein ibn Ali. So he has the answer to your question. He is the knower. It appears that in the midst of darkness, you are seeking light. I feel compelled to leave now, otherwise I may never see it. Ten days ago, I spied him. We were grazing our camels. It was some distance from here. A seven-day journey if you ride at night and rest during the day. He and his disciples had pitched their tents. They had to stop to rest on their way to Kufa. I gave him a cup of camel's milk. gave his blessing to both me and my camel. He made no pledge? Did he not say that he would grant you something a Kufa? He only said his prayers with us. I told him that I believe that oppression and tyranny have darkened the world. There was a bitter smile on his face. The strange farewell he gave me, caused me to think that he might never return. The horse is saddled. Show me the way to Kufa. How can I describe a road across the trackless sands? But see you not that a star? Follow its direction. Go. Should you encounter Hussein ibn Ali, tell him that the camels are giving plenty of milk. Though he robbed me of my sleep, we exchanged some words which were good their own right. But tell me, what do you know of the scent of flowers in Persia?
Rise up, you accursed! Stand up, ungrateful man, stand up! Rise up, thou whose death is nigh! Who are you? You know not? As a day ever come when the purest Arab girl was disgraced and her kinsmen failed to bring the perpetrator to justice? Is there no honor among Arab men? Is this how you repay our kindness and affection? Is this how we should be treated after accepting you? You were nothing but a speck of dust. Rise up and return. Your fate will be an example to all. Your punishment will serve a lesson to those who attempt to tarnish the integrity of Muslims. What was it that made you think the Rahila would not be avenged? Of what do you speak? What disgrace? By fleeing the marriage ceremony, you have disgraced Rahile. Don't you understand? All tribesmen are asking what fault was there in your bride that caused you to so quickly forsake her? This question is being asked throughout the tribes of Arabia. You, Christian, have profaned the Muslim's name. Thus, you deserve death. Arise and come with us. That I cannot do. I'm not here on my own will, you know. We have sworn an oath either to return with you or with your head. Mount your horse, or rise up and fight! Fight! I cannot raise my sword on my wife's brothers. Thou, Craven! Take thy sword! Why won't you fight? We have sworn in there you will return or be vanquished in honorable combat. Fight! Attack! I shall force you to fight! You coward! Fight! Attack! Is this shedding of blood not forbidden in Muharram? To shed the blood of those who have brought disgrace is never forbidden. I'll never lift my hand in battle against my beloved. You're a coward. You're not a man. These must be added to your list of attributes. Enough. All my life I had to make my own way. I have ground flour for hours. Do not try to frighten me. It's not the first time I've come under assault. No. Many a time have I had to protect myself. Do not compel me to raise my hand against you, kinsmen of my beloved. I swear if I'm compelled to raise this sword against you, none of you shall see tomorrow. Yet I would rather die myself than stay my wedding with the blood of the kinsmen of my bride. I fear lest I might deprive myself of Riley's tenderness. I would rather die a thousand times, a thousand times. Death is so easier for me than living without Riley. Then give us an answer to appease our souls, washing away the disgrace you have brought upon our house. All Arabia delights in our shame, and we dare not lift our heads among friends and foes. Were you not the one who pursued Rahale sick in her hand 37 times, never accepting a refusal? I swear by God I was that man. Had I been refused a thousand times, I would have asked again. And if the window had been barred against me, I would certainly have gone to the rooftop. If taking my life appeases your anger, do so, please. I swear by God, Rahele is dearer to me than my life. Tell me, Abdullah, what fault did you find in me that caused you to leave me? Perhaps you actually did leave me on purpose. Was it something I did? That diminished me in your eyes? Tell me what I have done. I swear that as the sun rises daily to dispel the darkness, you've been an angel of light in the bleakness of my life. May your pain be mine. May your name live for posterity. I have not come here by my own will. Another power has drawn me.
Tell me, Abdullah. Tell me. What power is this? A voice is calling me from Kufa. A voice that no one else can hear. Oh, Royal. Hussein ibn Ali is the reason I have become a Muslim. As you've told me. But when I listened to what those people were saying during the ceremony about Hussein ibn Ali, I became totally confused. I said it might leave this earth and might never find the truth. Regretting forever the fact that I did not seek. Regretting forever the fact that I did not seek the truth when it could be found. Did you hear that? He's in doubt. Let him speak. During the ceremony, I heard a call for help. After some time, I knew only I could hear it. The voice cried, Is there anyone who can help me? Thus I rose. He's speaking nonsense. Hold your tongue. I have heard these words in my dreams before. There was the blacksmith Asfad and two others, whom I did not recognize. Asfad had sought Hussein ibn Ali long before I took my first step. Long before me. You liar! You're raving, you speak nonsense, and this will not remove the disgrace. Be quiet, Tahir. My name is of no importance here. Let this new convert continue on his path. And Abdullah, you are without a single dinar or a drop of water. Go, Abdullah, but not empty-handed. Take this. Here's a shield and a lasso. Take this bread and coins. Go, Abdullah. If you have been called, then go. Let him go. Go find the truth, but return either with faith or denial. Riley, dear sister, how will you return to our tribe? With pride.
By now you should know where you are. I swear by God that these are but fallen idols. Ignorant idols which have fallen down. All those who pass by throw stones at them. My forefathers were their caretakers. And I do my best to atone for their sins. Some years back, people would decorate them with jewels. Now people hurl stones at them. Glory unto my Lord, who inhibits the heavens. I wish I knew what Hussein ibn Ali has said about them. How can I throw stones at lifeless idols while living ones roam the earth? Come, my dear steed. I cannot do what this man has said. If you seek the way to Kufa, take only the crooked roads. What is this test, Hossein? Why should I encounter a score of wrong people that if I rush to their aid, I be distanced from thee? If I ignore them, would I be a coward in thy sight? Nevertheless, onward. return and take the spoil. Whatever you lay your hands on is yours. <laughs> Why leave me in the midst of the caravan? Thank you. 
Old man, tell us where we are, if you know. Where are we? Where can we find Hussein Ibn Ali and his men? Are you friends? Yes. We are seeking Hussein Ibn Ali to fight him. Fight him? We are in the right. His enemies have been gathering these four days. Countless hosts are converging upon the site. A great battle is now in store. We've come late and have gotten lost in desert. If you know where we are, tell us now, lest we be late for the division of the sports. I know not the right path. Hiding the truth. To which side do you belong? A friend or foe? Are you mocking us? I too am lost in this desert. And I can remain here no longer. Stay! For some reasons, he raises doubts in me. Which is your tribe? Bani Cal. Then... You're a Christian. I believe in both Muhammad and the Messiah. What are you seeking in this wilderness? They say Jesus will be crucified at Nineveh. That's nonsense. I know what you speak. You speak of something long ago, foolish man. Seven centuries ago, Jesus was not slain by Christians. Why are Muslims slain their imams? Alive! Bring him back alive! Dig a deep pit. Put him inside and cover him up to his neck. Thus, you all thrills to lie. What has happened to you? Quiet! The Bani Khaif gives confirmation to his words. Who are the Bani Khaif to give support unto a Christian? Woe unto us all that a Christian of Bani Kaab should awaken us. We are fighting Ali's son. sharp swords, you all. The Bani Khaif have suffered many defeats at the hands of the Bani Jwai. Fear us all. We no longer fear you. Are we not the brave men of the same tribe that darken the days of Bani Jubaira and who is here to deny? Are we not the same ever-roaring tempest? Are we not the same men who created widows and orphans in your tribe? Who is there to contest this vain boasting? What has a tribe to say of its legendary nobility? When its very symbol proclaims nobility. Have you heard of any case of defeat for the Bani Jobeira tribe ever before? A 
I swear by God that when they fight righteously, they will never be defeated. And our nobility lies in the fact that the only one we fear is the God of heaven and earth. They've brought the Christian! They brought this accursed one who spoke words sharper than the sword. Sharper than the sword is the word of God. Give him his answer and let him know that he spoke not of the truth. This is my answer to him. Sword for sword. Ah! Do I owe my life? Which one of us has granted another life? Which one stands lacking before the Almighty? Wait no longer! Go! Thou art guiding me on the path which thou hast chosen. What is the meaning behind all this? Thou art testing me. Woe. Woe unto him who takes another step. Was there a drier wilderness? Or a more desolate desert? I... I... I haven't even a small dagger to defend myself. Can I not have been another joyful guest at thy feast? Can I? Never shall I be deceived by this mirage. God, I will not eat anymore. In thy direction have I come. 
As thou, Lord, has bidden me, Abdullah. <laughs> Is the name you're seeking. A strat is the name of the blacksmith who fashions sharp weapons. Examine this closely. This is what love means. Self-purification. These are Hussein's words as spoken by this blacksmith. And love is the means to the end, not the end itself. It depends on what this love will do to you. Ibn Ali reached Kufa. Where do you come from? Who you know nothing? We could not go to Kufa. The enemy army had blocked the way to Kufa. How many days distant is he? He's surely near. He has gone to a land called Karbala. Called Karbala. Army is converging upon army. This has been going on for three days now. I think that in the midst of this chaos, there is no end to them. We would have surely died. We would have surely died. It was a vain war. He did not pledge allegiance. On the siege in a land called Karbala, yes. He is nearby. <laughs> he is nearby. <laughs> For God's sake, tell me what has happened. It was just the other day that she shrieked like a lost soul. He asked for help, tell me. Where is a hand that can help me? We accepted it by water and by salt. We accepted it. He put his hand to his brow and said, You all have attachments. Some have wives and children. Some have parents or wealth. Others have unpaid debts. I hope that my presence will not be a stumbling block in your path. This is my mission, not yours. <laughs> He shut his eyes and covered his face with his turban. So that those who wished could depart. Free of shame. Free. <laughs> Lest my mother mourn my death. Lest my mother mourn my death. <laughs> But a few 
62 other than the kids. <laughs> Why did I return? Why did I come back? They asked me if he was one of the heathen. The heathen <laughs> were the ones they said this ask. war was uneven. This was a vain war. Into, into the covenant and give up life. Disguise yourself. Go and sit in the corner. You would not enter into the covenant. Now he's too ashamed to return. Which way is Karbala? Give me some water, please. How much should I pay? I am thirsty. Have you no compassion? You have not restricted the well. Go and take however much you want. Whoever wants water draws from the well himself. Give him some water.
Why do you mourn? You were once a Christian. Remain calm, but do not remain here. It's almost noon. Who has died that you lament so loudly? We are not mourning the dead. Is this not mourning? Ancient soothsayers have foretold that two suns would appear in the firmament in a single day. These people are willing to ward off evil. Two suns facing each other? It's been predicted for centuries. It's only a legend. Let's tarry till noon. I cannot wait that long. I must go. Why are you seeking Hossein ibn Ali? You know of this. What is the nature of your question? And who says I have a question for Hussein ibn Ali? Leave a token behind. Before you leave with this steed. The best horse I've ever seen. Yes. He asked for the best. Who did? Seven days ago. Hussein ibn Ali was standing almost in this, in this very spot. This is the rock on which he trod. This, the place where Zainab said her prayers. This, the beam to which his horse all you know, had been tied. This, the pail in which the banner holder, a boss, washed his hands. this journey, he said not. He was speaking in a loud voice. What did he say? Never have I beheld a commander who has not trampled on any number of bodies. The batterers are seated on their thrones and interpret God's, God's laws in their own wicked manner. These religious hypocrites murder the faithful. They deny them access to water. The thirst of the righteous is slaked with their own blood offered on dripping swords. They have ignored our teachings. They have ignored our teachings. The wicked array themselves in garments of covetousness. Their fortresses are built out of self-love. Their habitations are composed of selfishness. So he was here. When the time came to say goodbye, he said unto us, seven days from now a young man will ask for me, slake his thirst and, and give him a mount. All this he said? He will come to our feast. When he appears, I'll greet him from the highest peak. So oh, he knows. It is almost noon. I see no double sun. How much must I pay for the horse? It has already been paid for. Your tribesmen all have swords. Sell me one. This is our tradition to depart from this world with swords. 
To sell wine would be a shame. Nay, I would have been told by Hussein if you had need of wine. Is Hussein Ibn Ali there? Talk, please. Am I on the right path? Tell me. The commander of the thirsty is there. And should you come across any of those from the Bani Musab tribe, tell them that I have fled to avoid depriving them of water. The Kufis slay all those who desert. You are headed in the direction of Karbala only to flee? No one should escape alive!
I've been told that such a man would come to take charge. I spied a great banner in his hand and heard him say, Martyrdom is our pride. He was wearing his armor, which is now nothing but rags. He was soaked with blood. I've been told that such a man would come to take charge. Martyrdom is our pride. And his armor, which is now nothing but rags. He would take charge. He was soaked in blood. Are you one of the band of the thirsty? He is no soldier. Let him go. You arrive late and can have none of the spoils. He is no soldier. Let him go. Oh!
go back and relay our tale. Abdullah is here. He has reached the ultimate that few have reached. The reason that I am a Muslim is Hussein Ibn Ali. Where did you go? What did you see? Tell us, Abdullah. Did you find the truth? I saw the truth bound in chains. I saw righteousness pierced and bleeding, lying in the dust. I saw the truth mounted on pikes. I beheld the truth. 